Hey guys, welcome back. Working on Gary's engine again today, taking care of the cracks. And I've got a couple of them done already. I think you can see that one there, the pin is in there. Uh, we still got to get it down flush. Got another one there, got another one planned for there. Got that guy right up against the threads there. And we got to put another one here. So there's a bunch of them to do. And uh, I'll show you the process. Okay guys, we're going after this one right here. Our first step is to get the right size drill bit. And plunge that guy all the way down through there. Okay, next thing we're going to do, we've got our countersink all set up. We're going to go in there and we're going to give a little room for the shoulder of the pin. Okay, next we're going to tap that. Okay, these CF pins, they've got like a hook thread, so they, they pull the metal together. Uh, it's not just a straight thread, you need a very specific tap for it, you need the correct pins if you're going to do cracks in the deck like this. Um, like I say, they have a hook, they come up on each end of the thread, so they will not allow the crack to open up, uh, that's the key. Uh, I know there's a lot of guys just send quarter twenty bolts down and they just peen the hell out of them. Um, that'll work. It'll stop a, a a water leak or something if you get it done right. But this will keep the metal. Uh, the metal won't expand. So um, the correct tap and the correct pin are critical when you're trying to when you're trying to stop a crack. Okay, we're going to put a little bit of sealer in the hole. I get this sealer with my, these pins and all the tools and everything are from Lock and Stitch. Um, if you want to do this yourself, you can get all the components from Lock and Stitch. Um, this sealer that they sell is fantastic. It's heat activated and uh, dries in the absence of air. So, uh, this is really, really good stuff. Okay, let me get the socket. And the hex head is going to break off. Shoulder is going to go down in that countersink we cut. And there goes the hex head. Fell in the hole right there. But um, now a lot of guys are tempted to peen this. If you peen it straight down, that's going to screw up your, your hook thread. If you want, you could peen a little bit around the edges, but it's not really necessary. Just let that uh, sealer do its job. And there's the head that comes off. So now that crack, we don't have to worry about that crack migrating anywhere. Uh, so that's what we're doing on all the cracks. We're just going to go through these one at a time. We're going to put the we're going to drill it, we're going to countersink it, we're going to tap it, uh, and then we're going to put the correct uh, pin in there. Um, Lock and Stitch makes a lot of different pins, uh, different sizes, different lengths. Uh, make sure you get the right ones uh, for your application. Okay guys, we're working on these couple right here. And on this one, you can see we got a really messed up area there. Uh, there wasn't enough room for me to get one in up and down. 
so I've got a couple of them in one going this way and one coming this way and then I got them peened in there uh, that fixes that this one uh, the helicoil where am I this this one here the helicoil was messed up in there pretty bad I tried going in this way to stitch it um, I didn't like it helicoil was really messed up uh, the hole is oversized now uh, I'm not gonna put a helicoil back in there I'm gonna put a, a, a time cert in there you've seen me use those before uh, and a time cert makes your standard one and then they make what they call a big cert uh, and that's when you got a messed up hole like this uh, they give you a bigger um, OD um, bushing basically so we are gonna bore this out put a big cert in there and hopefully that's gonna fix us up um, a couple of these were questionable this one this one back here uh, it's holding okay I put a stud in there already it's holding okay uh, some of the repairs weren't great but um, I'm not gonna leave anything that's not gonna hold so we're gonna go for a uh, for a big cert in there and, and we'll see how that works out Okay guys, we got our oversized drill through there. And next thing we're gonna take the, the countersink out of the uh, package there. And uh, we're gonna send this down in there. Okay guys, the next thing we're gonna do is send the tap down. Got a little tap magic lube on there. Uh, that's a that's a pretty big tap. I'm just gonna send that down through. And with the oversized time cert, uh, that's gonna take care of that little crack we had there and hold everything together nicely. Okay, we got that tapped. We're gonna clean that hole out now um, with some acetone, and uh, so so that our sealer will stick. Uh, and then we're gonna send that guy in there. Okay, guys, um, you could use the stuff that you get from Lock and Stitch for a sealer. Uh, if you don't have any, a little red Loctite. Um, 271 I'm using here a little red Loctite on there will be fine if you got that at home uh, you need some kind of sealer on there make sure you oil your installing tool and you're gonna send that guy down there okay the inserts gonna bottom out That's going to expand the bottom of it as you go down. Oops, tap handles turning. And then you just take that guy out, and you're all set. Okay guys, I just took a little uh, wheel, uh, like a Scotch-Brite pad on, on an angle grinder, just to knock down the, um, the studs. You don't want, like I say, you don't want to beat those bad with a hammer. Okay, so we got everything fixed here. We got our pins in everywhere. Make another one down there. Okay, so now just got an old gasket here that I use for pressure testing. And now you'll see 
in this area uh, we've got water coming up that's where we stitched it and we're not so much stitching because we're going to get coolant into the oil we're stitching so that these cracks don't migrate and and they will this one will migrate right to the uh, the valve uh, and I've seen it because I, I have fixed a lot of blocks like that this one would migrate down here this one would come right down to the distributor this is an area I fix quite a bit because a crack starts right there uh, these two cracks here um, well, there they are uh, they will come into the valves they'll come uh, off and this whole area here sometimes breaks off um, but uh, you know you've, you've got to address the cracks otherwise it's going to lead to trouble and after I fix cracks and even after uh, you know after I pressure wash an engine and, and the junk comes out and everything you know uh, you get mud you get rust you get a lot of junk out of a block um, I always go in as insurance with some bars leak um, this is head seal and blown gasket head repair this this is the best stuff I found um, I used to use the old bars leak it worked real good um, now it's reinforced it says it right there reinforced with carbon fiber this stuff works real good and a lot of guys are like oh that's that's to to fix problems uh, it, yeah it can fix problems but it's good in an engine that's 70 75 years old and you've gone in there and you've dis disturbed it um, this engine is in pretty good shape uh, cylinders are good a lot of engines uh, I get a lot of junk out of them and that will open up areas that are prone to leaking um, you know you seal your head studs because every one of these head studs goes into water so you seal those as best you can but sometimes on the first startup they'll start weeping and they'll continue to weep unless there's something in there to kind of stop things up and in an old engine they're, they're full of of rust and corrosion and they can't leak in a new engine a fresh engine um, something like this uh, will do the job and again it's not a band-aid it's not a uh, that I'm hiding, trying to hide problems or anything. It's just good insurance. You don't want coolant leaks. You don't want anything getting any coolant getting into your oil, anything like that. Uh, don't be afraid to use that on a fresh rebuild. Um, it, it's it's really it, it's the way to go because when you strip them down to nothing, you just open yourself up to a lot of problems. Uh, all the cracks are fixed now. Uh, we could we could hone it. Uh, I'll probably do the valves. I, I don't like any of the valve work here. We're going to recut all these valves. Uh, as you can see from the factory, this has hardened exhaust seats in it. I think you can see the shininess there. Maybe right here you can see. So we don't have to go and put seats in this, uh, but we do have to address uh, the not good uh, valve job that was done here. So, I'll probably do that next, and then we'll hone it, and then we'll be ready to uh, to get on to cleaning it again and, and, and assembly. Okay, guys, one last thing we're going to do is just, I've got all my pins where they want to be. We're just going to stone the top of this. We're going to go over our pins, and you'll be able to feel a high spot. You can get stones like this in, in, in many different kind of grits. This is a double grit one here. Uh, sometimes after I put pins in, I'll take a light skim cut on the deck. We already took so much off this block, I don't want to take any more off. So... Um, uh, they're sanded down, we're stoning them, we're making sure that there's no high spots. We're going to take a straight edge, run it over this, make sure we don't have anything out of the ordinary, um, and then on to the valves. 
if you need any more information on the lock and stitch method, there's good videos out there right from lock and stitch. I've done a lot of blocks where I've stitched um, a lot of Willie's blocks back together. Um, <clears throat> you just got to search for my videos. Um, there was one pretty crazy one where I had to start from a valve, go down a cylinder, and work around the cylinder. Uh, you could do a lot with these pins. Uh, you could really save almost any block. Uh, so if you need more information, check out my videos. Check out Lock and Stitch. Uh, I feel they're the best in the business. Uh, their pins are the best. Um, but if you have a block, it's worth saving compared to getting one of those Chinese ones. They're, they're awful. Don't spend your money on one of those. Um, this block is ready to go uh, to the next stage. So, like I say, any questions on the stitching, just let me know. Uh, otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.